In this tutorial, we will be covering various aspects of the FL Studio interface, which once mastered will help improve your overall FL Studio experience immeasurably. We will be looking at knobs and sliders, the various LCD controls, using scroll bars, event editing, the snap controls, zooming in the playlist, piano roll and event editor, and the MIDI stretch function in the piano roll editor. Knobs and sliders work in exactly the same way all through the FL Studio interface. Click and drag upwards to increase the controller value, and click and drag downwards to decrease it. To return to the control's default value, hold down the Alt key and click on the control. To make fine adjustments to the control, hold down the control key on your computer keyboard while you are dragging. Some controls, such as panning knobs, have a center detent which freezes the movement of the knob as you're turning it whenever it reaches a central position. To avoid the freezing action, hold down the shift key while rotating the knob. Virtually every control in FL Studio has a right-click menu associated with it. These menus will allow you to select default values, open event editors, associate automation clips to the controls, as well as assign MIDI controllers. Be aware that buttons in the menu bars have right-click functionality as well. For example, the metronome, the typing keyboard to piano keyboard, and the count-in button. LCD controls appear all through the FL Studio interface as well. Examples of LCD controls are the project tempo control, the pattern number, and various controls within the channel settings such as pitch bend range and FX routing. Increasing or decreasing values in LCD controls work the same as knobs and sliders. Click or drag up and down in the controller. If you want to make incremental adjustments, hover the mouse above or below the controller box and the cursor will change to a single direction arrow. Single clicks will change the controller value one step at a time. Clicking and holding the mouse button will cause the value to change rapidly. Next we'll look at scroll bars. The scroll bars in FL Studio work in a similar way to scroll bars in other programs. Click and drag the bar to move it. If your mouse has a wheel, use that to scroll up and down. If you ever need to scroll both directions at once, right click the scroll bar and drag in the directions you would like. Another aspect of FL Studio you will find yourself using a lot is zooming. To quickly zoom within the playlist, piano roll and event editor windows, Use the zooming box in the top right hand corner of the window. In the piano roll and playlist editors, there are two. The top one will zoom horizontally on the timeline, and the bottom one will zoom vertically on audio and automation clips in the playlist, and on control data in the piano roll. Right clicking and dragging on the lower zoom box allows you to zoom vertically and horizontally. You can also use the page up and down keys to zoom in and out as well. Using the number keys 1 to 5 on the computer keyboard, not on the number keypad, also gives you access to quick zooming. The corresponding commands are from 1 to 5, far, medium, close, best fit, and to selection. To selection relates to selections you have defined with the select tool in the timeline. Perhaps the simplest zooming method is by using the zoom tool in the editor toolbar. The keyboard command for the tool is simply Z. Click and drag to rubber band the area you want to zoom to. Click anywhere in the background of the editor to zoom out again and view all data in the editor window. The next part of the interface we're going to look at is the snap controls. The snap settings control the behavior of event editing in all windows that use the tempo grid. They also affect the quantized behavior of new MIDI recordings into the sequencer. There are three places that you can control snap settings. The global snap settings and the local snap settings in the playlist and piano roll. Clicking on the snap drop down box or button reveals a range of incremented snap settings. These range from one whole bar through to one quarter of a beat or in other words one sixteenth note right through to one-sixth of a step. The number of steps in a beat is defined in the project general settings in the options menu. If you have four steps per beat, then one-sixth of a step will equal triplet sixty-fourth notes. FL Studio will update the tempo grid display depending on the zoom and snap settings. At very fine snap settings, the grid resolution won't display, but the snap settings will still apply. Setting the snap to none allows you to freely alter the event without any snap behavior. When you are making MIDI recordings, define a snap setting and the recording will be quantized automatically to the resolution that you set. To finish off, we'll look at a couple more small points about interfacing with FL Studio. In the Event Editor and the Piano Roll Note properties, you can just click and drag to paint values in quickly and easily. If at any time you wish to draw straight line alterations, simply right click and drag. And finally, to quickly time stretch a selection in the Piano Roll Editor, while holding down the Shift key, click and drag the end of a note to the point that you want the selection stretched or compressed to.